Hi there, and welcome to another video. In this video, we'll be looking at my HP Gen 8 microserver. This particular one, completely standard at the moment, running an Intel Celeron CPU, 2.3 gigahertz dual core, and four gigabytes of ECC memory. Now, what we'll be looking at doing is seeing if we can upgrade the CPU and also upgrade the memory. Now, one thing to consider when you are upgrading the CPU is that in the microserver, it's passively cooled. There is only a heatsink on the CPU. There is no fan. So we don't want to upgrade to a CPU with a much higher TDP. Otherwise, we could run into thermal throttling issues. Now, I have a chart here showing some of the CPUs that are compatible with the Generation 8 microserver. And the one that I have gone for is the Xeon 1260L with a TDP of 45 watts, four cores and eight threads. So when we do do the upgrade, we will have to keep a close eye on the thermals. If they get too high, we may have to consider putting a fan somewhere on the heatsink. So here we have my microserver and a few other parts that we're going to install. We have two sticks of DDR3 ECC1600 memory. We have our new, well, <laughs> we have our second-hand Xeon 1260L CPU. And we've got a few other little bits that we'll go through during the course of the video. So first things first, let's take the lid off the microserver. So to undo the lid, we turn the microserver around and we have two captive screws on the back. And pull the case towards you and lift up over the top. And we can then see inside the microserver. First things first, we'll disconnect the fan power cable. If you grip it on either side, there's little tabs. Now we'll flip the microserver around and remove the 24 pin power, like so. We'll also remove the cable for the array the metal tab and lift, that comes up nicely, and next one final little cable, being very careful not to rip out the wires from the connector. And one final cable just in front of the memory, so we're going to remove the memory, place that to one side. just has clips on either side and it comes off. And turn the microserver to the back. And to remove the motherboard, press down on the little clip and pull. And the entire motherboard still is there. Easy. So once all the screws are loosened, you can remove the heatsink and we can expose the CPU socket. I'll just get a cloth with some isopropyl alcohol just to clean the heatsink. Before I do that, I'll whip out the CPU. I'll probably give that a clean as well in case I use it again. Yes. Okay, more focus out. Well, 
bit of spill it everywhere. Okay, so now we can grab our replacement CPU and try and get in the box. CPU. Get the right way around. You've got two little notches on either side, which line up with the little notches there. Slip that into the socket. Line it up. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Quick wash of the hands to get rid of the old thermal paste. And now we'll apply some fresh just in the center. Not too much, but not too little. That should be enough. A little bit of a more squirt just for good measure. Yeah. Could have done that better. I will. Okay. And now we'll place the heatsink. Over the top. Oh, hit the right way around. <laughs> and then tighten the screws. So we'll just tighten in a diagonal format. Try and do it without my hands in front of the camera. CPU replaced. Hopefully it works. So we'll reinsert another board, just watch out for any cables. Line it up. And slide it in. Let's just check. Make sure the cables aren't gonna snag. Slot it in. Now I'll confess I did the front cable off camera as it's a little bit fiddly and a little bit tight. And I've got big fingers. Finally, we have our memory kit. So we have two sticks, eight gigabytes ECC memory, 1600 speed. To that and cap. It can't be this difficult. Okay. And then the second one. Into that. Snap it into place. Tight. Just double check all your cables. Well done up. That looks good. Now another upgrade that you can run on microservers is at the top here, where you may have a CD drive mounted. What you can actually do is grab yourself another SSD and you can just place it in the top here and if we take a standard SATA cable this one is 30 centimeters long we can run it down the back like so and then at the bottom here in blue we have a SATA socket. We then take the SSD and plug that into there. 
Then for power, at the top here, you have a mini Molex connector. This is the old floppy drive style, if you're as old as me. But obviously that won't go into the power of the SSD. But what you can get is a mini Molex to SATA power. So we plug mini Molex into there and then plug the data into the top there. Maybe if we can just arrange the SSD, make sure the cables aren't fouling the fan at the back. And then we've added an extra SSD to our storage. Okay, so the system has now been booted for nearly an hour now. And we can see that it's recognized the new CPU, Intel Xeon 1260L. And it's also recognized our memory upgrade. We're now at 16 gigs of ECC memory. Now my fear was the temperatures for the CPU because of the passive heatsink and the lack of a fan on that heatsink. But at the moment we're only running 39 degrees, not really doing too much at the moment, not pushing the CPU. So it's still something to keep an eye on. But I have to say, I'm quite happy with that. We've picked up the four cores and the eight threads. If we go into storage and into disks, we can see our three four terabyte drives for our storage, the 120 gig SSD, which is our boot disk, but we can also see the new 500 gig SSD that we added into the top of the system. So all in all, I'd say not a bad upgrade. Thanks for watching. See you again soon. Bye for now.